live. You gotta put that work in, man. You gotta go get Learn. See, listen. This is what I tell them. Serve. I've been grinding for so long. I wake up and chase my goals. You're in the You're in the right place. You checking out? Chip Baker, the success card. Conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles. Compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And we have uh, Mr. Kendall Ficklin with us today. And uh, Mr. Mr. Ficklin is doing some amazing, amazing things with Blind Nation. And uh, this it's a great guy to, to listen to. And so I'm glad that and honored that we have this time uh, on the Success Chronicles today. Let's just go ahead and dig in. If you could just uh, talk to us about your life story. You know where you're from, and you know some things you've been blessed to do, and up until now. So you know, I always tell people nobody cares about your story until you can tell them how you came through what you've been through. Yes. So, um, what I want to tell people is, you know, I done been through some storms, like like most people, alcoholic, and I just started saying that this maybe in the last couple of years that I was actually an alcoholic. I used to say I just drank too much. You know, you just think you drink and you, you good. Right. Alcoholic, um, come through that, come through a, a, a divorce, um, and, you know, um, built businesses. Um, I've, you know, I haven't worked a nine to five in over 20 years. So I've started, stopped, failed, succeeded in at least 10, 11 businesses throughout my life. Um, always failing forward. Um, father at a young age, got married the first time at a young age, um, so dope, of course, you know, um, lived that life, um, used dope, of course, lived that life, um, sick, you know, physically, all that. So it's not about the storms so much, but what I really love for people to know and understand is, is how you, how you perform in the storm, right? It's, it's what you do while you're in the storm. What kind of raincoat do you got on? What kind of umbrella do you have? And as the, as the rain and the storm starts to subside and you coming through and you take that off, like, are you becoming a new person? Like, what did you learn in the storm? Because you know, like, once you come out of that joint, I'm about to head into another. And it's yeah. only what you learned in that storm that's going to get you ready for life, for the next storm that's coming to life. Somebody is going to die in your life. That's we all checking out. Somebody going to get sick. Somebody going to get cancer. I done had the car repossessed, the four car notice on the crib, the whole nine. Like we've been through it. Nobody give a dog on about that. Kendall, how did you come through it? I made a decision and I said, I got tired. I got tired of being broke. I got tired of, of drinking. I got tired of the hangover. I got tired of not being counted on, of, of my kids not being able to count on me. I got tired and because I got tired, I made a decision and I said, I have to do better. I got to do something different because somebody's counting on me. Mm, good stuff. I love it. How you perform through the storm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. No doubt. No doubt. And I think, I think what happens is most of us, we go through. All right, so look, there's four types of storms, right? You got a thunderstorm. You got a snowstorm, blizzard, whatever. You got a hurricane, yeah. and you might have a tornado, right? So level one, thunderstorm, right? Level two, snowstorm, blizzard. Level three, hurricane. Level four, tornado. You know, four different types. Four different category storms. 
most in a category one, that's a thunderstorm, bro. You can you can walk through a thunderstorm. You can still work in a thunderstorm. Things still happen in a thunderstorm. They ain't telling you the city is shut down in a thunderstorm. No. Nah. Snowstorm, pretty much the same thing. You can still go and get things done. I, I'm from Jersey. You know, we used to have snowstorms, and I still used to go um, wherever I had to go on ice in Jersey. But now when you start getting into a category three and a category four, a hurricane and a tornado, it's time to think about evacuating. Yeah. And most people are making level three or four decisions in a level one storm. Ooh. And what happens is when you evacuate and you only in a thunderstorm, you ain't able to get everything that you need from the storm because you done checked out. And then you get into a level three or four storm and you some people only think, yo, I'm only in a thunderstorm. I can still stay here. And you end up dying because you didn't evacuate. And I don't mean that physical death. You die mentally because you don't have the proper gear. You're not properly prepared to work your way out of a level three or four storm. Ooh, <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, so talk to us about uh, Grind Nation. Oh, yeah. So um, people ask me, like, like, how did you start Grindation? What was the purpose of starting it? Um, Grindation literally has only been in existence. We're only two years old, right? I started, I got blessed about four years ago and had the opportunity to get coached by um, CJ, who is the president of ETA, ETs, the president of ETA, um, ETs right hand. And I had the opportunity to, to, to be coached by him about four years ago. And at that time, um, you know, I, I was speaking and um, I came to CJ. I wanted to be a phenomenal speaker. I, you know, I said, I need you to train me on how to speak. He was like, great. And during that time, you know, I was speaking. I was I was getting gigs. I was making no money. I was getting no zero, getting no money from speaking. But I was speaking. I was a great rah-rah guy. I was like the great. I could do like the football speeches, but I was doing it with teachers and grownups for like an hour. I was doing the rah-rah speech for an hour. And um, it literally, bro, used to take me three or four days to do a 30-minute speech. Because yeah. I ain't know. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know about content. I didn't know about my story. I didn't know about those type of things. And it became so difficult and challenging for me. I went to CJ one day, and I said, bro, I just want to coach. Like, I ain't trying to speak. It's just too much. You got to stand up there. You got you to hold people's attention. It was just too much. And he said, all right, I'm going to make you a great coach. I said, cool. I was already coaching. I was cutting hair. I was coaching from behind the chair right. for over 20 years. So he said, I'm going to make you a great coach. I was like, yes. He said, but you still got to speak. And he told me something that made so much sense. He said, people buy E.T.'s books because they heard him speak, not because he's an author. People buy the shirts because they heard him speak. Right? People join the program because they heard him speak. You and I are on this call today because you heard me speak. Yeah. And so I, f I realized that I had to speak, but I still could be a coach. But I started coaching and my coaching was based on me speaking and I would get clients and I would have personal coaching clients and I might, might meet with them once a week or twice a month or whatever it looked like. But there was something missing in between the gap of me meeting with them. So I used to have clients that I might meet with twice a month, but there was a gap in there. And I said, I need something to fill that gap. I need something for them to do, something to keep them lit and lifted in between the time I'm on the phone with them. Because I didn't have the confidence back then. And I'm looking on Instagram and it's a coach on every Instagram page. And I'm like, if I don't stay connected with them and keep them lit, I'm going to lose them as a client. Yeah. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to start up a community. And I started up Grindation. And I, I got on the phone with a guy. He literally hit me up in December 2015. Hit me up, got on the phone with him. He was looking for some coaching. And I said, cool. And I was on the phone with him. I said, I got a community too. I got a group. And he was like, oh, word? I didn't have it. I told him I had it. I had a group. It was just a thought in my mind. Right. I said, I got a group called, I said, called um, Grindation. Now, mind you, like a couple of months before that, I was speaking somewhere. And it just came out, grindation. It's the foundation of your grind. Like, what is your grind standing on? How strong is your found? I made the word up. So I'm on the phone with him. I said, yeah, I got a group, man. It's called grindation. And I was like, ooh. 
And I said, yeah, we got a private Facebook page. We got this, we got that. And I ain't have nothing set up. I ain't have no nothing. I said, but we got it all set up. I'm speaking the joint into existence. And he was like, yeah. He was like, man, I want to be a boy. He was like, well, how much is it? I'm like, $99 a month. <laughs> and he was like, for real? I said, yeah. And you can get personal coaching with that too. And he was like, what? I'm like, yes, sir. He signed up. I got another call from another guy, same thing. I said, yeah, no, I got a group called Grindation. I had nobody in the group. So those two guys came in and I created a private Facebook page and named it Grindation. And I put them in it. I put my family in it. I put my personal coaching clients in it. And we had our first call. And it was about five or six of us. And that's how I started. And we just built out from there. And so like somebody asked me the other day, I do a boss program on how I went from zero to six figures in a short amount of time, how I built this business, how, how I grind like this. And somebody asked me, like, so what was your vision and what was your plan? Like, what was your vision for Grindation? You know what I mean? I'm like, vision? What you talking about? I said, B. I said, B. And it is. That was the vision. Just B. The vision comes as you work on it. So, like, I'm looking down the road. And I can see the G. I can see my whole um, business model, but it's not clear. Like you don't, what you're doing right now, when you wanted to start it, you didn't know, you didn't have every I dotted, every T cross. You still don't. Neither do I. No, no business does. At all. Yeah. Bro, no Apple didn't, Apple didn't know, like Steve Jobs had no clue that there would be an iPhone 10X yeah. and what it would look like, the technology. But you know what they do? They just keep grinding. That's it. You know, it's funny you say that, too. Uh, I've had people that I've interviewed or talked to, and they ask me, you know, like the official question. So, you know, what's, you know, when you started, you know, what's your, you know, target or what's your, like, man, all I know is go. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a coach. I play ball. Like, yeah. like all I know is go. We're going to figure it out. Yes, yeah. I know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that I think that's the biggest problem for most people. Most people, they got, you know, you heard of this paralysis by, you know, because of analysis, like you trying to analyze the whole thing. And really, I call it you overthinking and underperforming. Yeah. And you get to the point like you just get used to you got an excuse for everything. You know, like I don't, you ever seen the girls play double dutch and they got the rope going right. And then the one girl, she's she like <clears throat> waiting for the right. You know what I mean? Waiting for the right. And that's what some people doing with their life. You at life right now. Opportunity is like, boom, come on. And you like, mm, mm, well, I don't know exactly. Mm. See, with grindation, I ain't know what I was doing. But I didn't let that. I was like, jump. Yeah. I jumped in now two years later, like from zero to six figures in, in, in two years. I'm talking about almost 300 members in two years. And then so they asked me, like, how, how are you building it? I grind every day. I put content out every day. I nurture my community every day. I'm hunting for new members every day. And from that one thing has sprung these other things, these other opportunities. And, it's, and because I'm, I'm being who I am, as I ask people all the time, Chip, give me three words that describe who you are. And they'll have these words, right? So for me, I'm powerful, I'm a leader, and I'm entrepreneurial. Those are three words that describe me. And so when you have those three words that describe yourself over here, you should be able to look over here and what you do should be a direct reflection of who you are. And most people, what they do is a direct reflection of nothing. Yeah, don't line up. And that's why you're not getting success. Right. That's why people are not, ha quote unquote, happy. I'm going to use that term. That's why people are not seeing the making the impact and seeing the gains that they need to see or not being fulfilled with what they do because they're just doing to be doing. They're not making a living being who they are supposed to be. They ain't walking in the call. Yeah. And so you wander around in the wilderness looking for money or looking for checks, right? You out here like, yo, I'm trying to, and you making decisions out of desperation. Man, I got to get this bread. I, we all did it. Like, I went and flipped it, moved it, so let's get it real. And so you're making these decisions in life with the wrong reason for doing it, 
your wrong why. You don't know who counting on you. And so you are, you getting fruit, but a lot of times it's spoiled. Mm, a lot of banana, huh? Exactly. I said, what are three things you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Uh, <laughs> being two, th- first thing is my children going from calling me pop to daddy as grownups. Yeah. For years I was pop. And then four or five years ago when I decided to change my life, I went from being called pop to daddy, right? Um, the other thing I'm proud of is what I am current, the example I'm currently setting for my legacy. There's an example that I'm setting for, for, for my legacy and the extended legacy. The example I'm setting for young soldiers, for young men, you know, within Grindation, we have G-men. Now, and most people don't know this. Literally, the call on my life is for me. To make me. That's what I do. Like that period, like that, that's the call. Um, That's the second thing. And the third thing is um, to be a, being a responsible husband to my wife, like loyalty, like that. I'm proud of that. Cause you know, we don't, mm. I mean, come on. Like I'm like the man, like my first marriage, I ain't know what I was doing. And I was doing a lot that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, but this go around, I've learned. So there's five stages in a man's life. There's a baby stage where we cry for attention and love. There's a, the stage of where a youth, where we yearn for attention and love. Stage three is where we are young males, where we act out for attention and love. The fourth stage is that grown man. You're a grown man. Like you give attention and love but i'm striving to stay in and to be in that level five stage five that's a mature man you ain't just giving attention and love you are attention and love and so for me i'm proud of the fact that at stage five now in my life being that mature man i'm i ain't thinking about what i'm giving i'm being love and attention for my wife for my family and for those people that are counting on me to be and do, to be who I am and do what I do. Mm, that's stage five, that's pretty good. On oh, stage five. And what happens is sometimes you teeter twat, you teeter totter between five and four. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. some days I'm a phenomenal grown man. That mature man be slipping like, bro, like I done told you, like <laughs> oh. there's no perfect man. We don't deal with perfection, we deal with progress. There it is right there. What do you think it takes to achieve success? Work. You got to work. Like you have to, it takes work. Now I'm not talking about like you night and day, you just, it takes work. Like, and it's not easy. It's going, I think what most people fail, where most people fail is we want it overnight and you're not willing to get it over time. And anything that you, it's it's amazing what you can done when, when, when you stick with something long enough. And that's and that's anything in your life, and that's success. Yeah, that's I, mean, I don't define success by money. Life. Exactly, I don't define success by money anymore because I've matured now. I define success by being able to make a living, being who I'm supposed to be, and make a living doing what I love. I define success that my kids looking at me like daddy, and not. I define success by me being able to leave a legacy for my, I define success by the impact that I'm able to make on people's lives. I define success by being an example of what I know I'm supposed to be doing and living that life. Yeah. You know, and it takes daily work. For sure, for sure, yeah. daily progress. Yeah, and, but see, here's the thing. I'm not talking about like, most people will look at this and say, okay, work, I got to get to work on my grind. I got to grind because I need to make this and make that. Mm-mm. I'm talking about being disciplined and getting your butt up and eating right. Being disciplined and taking care of your health. I'm talking about getting up and studying whatever you need to study to be a better husband, father, man, whatever that looks like for you, woman. Whatever. I'm talking about working on you because not, look, most people think success is something that is out here and it comes to you. Mm-mm. 
before any of this comes to you, something got to come from you. Mm. You ain't just going to be like, you're going to jump out there and be like, give me success. Come on, success. It don't work like that. There's a change that got to take place. Something got to come from up out of you out here in order for success to even be attracted to anything that's going on out up, up, up in here. I got to make, I got to be attractive to success. Yeah. And most of us ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't attracting nothing. Because this, the thing on the inside, you know what I mean? It's on the inside and it's ugly on the inside because your core is weak. The core is weak and you ugly. Like most people looking like you say the core, they're like, my man is ripped. He got the six pack and the eight pack. Mm -mm, I ain't got no eight. That ain't what I got. But on the inside, my core is strong. It might not look like an eight pack, but yeah. because I'm developing myself from the inside, from the root, like what? There's a there's a bamboo tree in Southeast Asia, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Come on. Brown tells the story like Les Brown told it. Come on. Yep. Yeah, it go deep four years. You got water to join. Mm. It's this year it pops up to ninety feet high. Yeah, right? yeah. The four all through all the way up up until it pops up to ninety feet high. It's just developing the foundation, the root, because when it grows up ninety feet high, when storms come. And storms are going to come in your life. And winds are going to blow. The tree will bend, but it will never break because the foundation is strong. And most of us don't have the foundation. And when life storms come, we not only bending, bro, we have, we have completely, boom, failed. You broke and broke in because your foundation was weak. Your core was weak. And you did not allow your foundation to get strong because you were looking for something on the outside. You're looking for the weight to make you strong. It's not the weight. It's the lift. Mm. There it is. You know, you talked about a couple of things that, that that's, that's big to me as far as, you know, uh, foundation, uh, experiences that you're blessed to, to go through, that you learn from. And then even bigger than that, leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you discussed how, you know, we all going to die. You know, everybody's going to have their time. You know, and that's one thing that, you know, in going through those stages of, of manhood myself, you know, uh, and I, I've had a chance to speak about this before, where, you know, I, the, the people that are the ones that have taught me how to be me, you know, throughout my life, like, man, those people are starting to disappear because they're dying. You know, and so it made me realize, well, okay, now I'm the person to the people that those people were to me. Exactly. You know, and so just, you know, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? You know, what are you going to leave, you know, like those people left for you? And, uh, you know, I think when you evaluate it, like you said, you talk about the stages and different things. Like it's super important. I think when you go about your daily business, if you're focused on that and and know that hey, it's for a reason, it's for a person, or for a purpose. You know, you don't you're gonna be able to grind easy because you know why you're doing it. You know why you're doing it exactly, exactly. I think a lot of us don't. Um, we're going after the wrong thing. And don't look, don't get it twisted, bro. I know we need bread. Like, I know we need money. I, I come from, I'm a born hustler. Like, I've yeah. been hustling from day one. I, I they, Look, nobody chased money better than I did back in the day. Cat, bro, like, I had I had barbershops. I own barbershops. So, literally, I'm talking about in the front of the shop, we was cutting hair. In the back, I used to have this room called the Boom Boom Room. Yeah. And that's we was cutting DVDs. I had, used to have the young boys in there taking orders of movies and they was cutting fresh movies in the back. Download them. I had the whole big 24 joint. I man, I'd probably still be in jail if we if they ever came through. And you know, I'm having there'd be like 20 pounds of weed back there sometime. And we move now my hustle better than me. Yeah. But I understand now that when you anything that you chase, right? implies that you got to go after it and you're trying to catch it. Money is not to be chased, it's to be earned. And most times when you catch something, sometimes you're catching things that aren't meant to be caught. 
and you you end up having to drop things that should have never that you should have never caught, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the thing: you go, we go chase money, and we get it, but we don't know what to do with it. All we know what to do with money is spend it, because that's what we was chasing it for. We hustling to get money to pay bills, to take care of this one, to take care of that one, and not thinking about yo. When I get this bread, how can I multiply? Yeah. How can I be fruitful? How can I multiply and replenish? Yeah. Where's my re-up? <laughs> and most people don't think like that. Most, most, especially my young dudes, we just going out there just to chase and get money. Like we chase women or we chase things, but you chase them with the wrong mindset. Go earn. And then when you earn, you have a different respect for it. And if you know why you're doing what you're doing, what you're doing it for, if you're doing it for a legacy, you know you can't just make money. You got to multiply money. Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much for taking the time again to uh, interview with Success Chronicles. Uh, Lots of good heat from this one. (laughs) Lots of good heat. uh, Thank you guys for uh, watching this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless.